This is John T for the Boxing Voice. I'm in Slough with Adam Azeen. Adam Azeen, sorry, just after his pro debut live on Sky Sports. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, John? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks, Adam. So talk to us about the night as a whole first. As I said, it was your debut live on Sky Sports. How did you find the event? Uh, it was a great event. Fighting on Sky Sports on my first fight, and in the sixth round, it was just a, just a great feeling. Um, it's like a dream come true. I'm only 18 years old, and fighting on that is just uh, amazing. And how did you find the actual fight itself? Uh, it was a good fight. Uh, like I said, my skill paid the bills uh, in that fight. Uh, he was a very good, uh, tough fighter, very durable, but um, I think my skills just was too much for him for that fight. But uh, he's beaten two undefeated prospects, so which is, um, which is a big thing as well, because that was one of my toughest first fight to have because no one would have, uh, would have fought that guy in my first fight so yeah fair enough there was a lot of noise about that but yeah. building up to That's it right, because yeah. your, your debut was highly anticipated but he beat Bill Ali last time out who was a highly touted prospect undefeated 4 and I think he was for Frank Warren yeah. what was the thinking about you only just turned 18 yeah. what was the thinking about going out and having a debut against someone so good and experienced um, I just stay focused stay disciplined I knew I could I could beat him quite easy because I've seen him fight and I was thinking in my head this guy would just be coming at me but I didn't expect him to go back foot that much but so I just uh, applied the pressure on him and started adjusting. Okay, so it was good to get six rounds under your belt because it did go the distance, but yeah, a first six rounds, so that'll put you in good stead, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So I understand you've been uh, talking to us a little bit about your sparring because, again, newly pros don't always get top draw sparring, but tell us who you've been sparring. Uh, I've been sparring Luke Campbell, uh, getting him ready for the Ryan Garcia um, uh, fight. Luke Campbell is a world-class fighter. Getting in the ring with him is just, just amazing because getting that experience as much as I can is just... It gets me more developed for uh, uh, more skills that I haven't uh, learnt myself. So excellent. How many rounds did you spar with him? Uh, I've done about a good, probably about forty-nine rounds with Luke Campbell. Forty-nine rounds. Uh, hopefully, I'll be doing more with him and uh, and getting that experience with Luke Campbell. What did you learn from that sparring? I knew that Luke Campbell is a, a technician, a very good counter puncher, a very powerful as well. And uh, he, after the spar, he tells me a few tips like what I need to work on and how I need to develop in the pro games. He's just a, he's a very, uh, very nice person to speak with and uh, he's a great person. And I know sparring stories, they stay behind closed doors, Adam, and I'm sure you don't want to talk too much, but how did you get on with that sparring against Luke? Uh, it was just, uh, like I said, it just learning uh, from that spot, it just helps me a lot as well. Also, I'm helping him because uh, my speed, uh, I'm just helping him for the Ryan Garcia fight because Ryan Garcia is, is very like very quick, so I'm helping him to get him ready. But get, sharing the room with him, it was just, just a great feeling. Okay, excellent stuff, and that will give you some good experience. So moving forward, I think the reason we have touched on it that you kind of went out and had a hard fight first time out, you didn't really want to go out and start against some people that you definitely know you beat. For anyone who's uh, listening who doesn't know, you're one of the most decorated amateurs we've got. I think. When did you start boxing? I started the uh, age of four. I started boxing. And you've won pretty much everything you can win. So. It's, uh, I read something the other day on Instagram. You've got real high ambitions to get a world title quite quickly. Tell me about that. Uh, I just like ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to become world champion, like the youngest world champion. Like uh, I, I want to become a world champion between the age of 20 or 21 because anyone could do it. Deborah Haney's done it, and Tia Fimo is an undisputed world champion. So if they can do it, I can do it, and I know I can. I can show all my uh, skills and get to the top with them. Excellent. So when can we expect you back out then? Because you're going to have to have a lot of fights quickly. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably be fighting next next year, uh, probably like end of January or mid-January. Okay, quick turnaround. Will that hopefully be on TV again, yeah, do you think? Hopefully, yeah, it'll be on TV. Hopefully to stay tuned. It'll be on uh, Sky Sports or any, any um, channel they give me. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's go back and talk about that lightweight division, which is what you've, uh, you're in, and you've just mentioned some of the names. What did you think of the Lopez Lomachenko fight? Uh, that fight it was a, a very technical fight, but like I said, Lomachenko just started late, but Tiafimo he 
he got uh, close to gut and just step, uh, stuck with his boxing. So, but Lamachenko, he, if he picked up the pace, then it would have been a different uh, scenario. So, but I still think uh, Tiafimo is a real deal in lightweight as well. So. Do you think if they rematch, yeah. do you think it'd be the same result, Tiafimo winning? Think it would be the same result. I think Lamachenko beats Tiafimo Lopez uh, in the second fight because Lamachenko know what his mistake was, was not to start off too late. So he, if he start off early, quicker, then he could have beat uh, Tiafimo Lopez. There were one or two rumours that he might have had an injury at the beginning or going into the fight. The fight yeah. Did but, you see that? Uh, I'm not sure that because a lot of people do have excuses after the fight like uh, about the shoulder or whatever his hands but if it's the win uh, Tiafuma won so the win's a win for Tiafuma yeah fair enough it was a great fight and yeah. I'd, I'd like to see a rematch on that yeah, that would be a great rematch what about the Javonta Davis fight did you see that oh, that was a, a very good fight uh, uh, Santa Cruz uh, gave him a good uh, five rounds came at him it was a great fight but when he got to that stage Javonta Davis uppercut was just lethal and he was just powerful and that was a very great shot so Okay, and moving on to Devin Haney. So Devin Haney was out as well. What did you think his performance? His performance, like he done well, but I don't think like uh, he done like what he said he was gonna do. Like how he said he was gonna knock, uh, knock out uh, Gamboa, but Gamboa was just still standing there. But fair play to Gamboa for taking those shots as well. So. Mm, fair enough. Okay, so if there was a little mini tournament and you had to put your last pound on it, yeah. who would be the king and win that tournament in that division? That division, I think Javonte Davis beats uh, all of them in that division. So I think he's powerful, he's got very good uh, skills, and I think he's just too much for everyone in that division. Excellent. Well, look, if you're um, going to be getting one of these world titles in two or three years, mate, you'll be mixing it with them before you know it, because they are all young, well, Lomachenko not so much, but the rest of them are quite young themselves. So, yeah, that's right. Excellent stuff. Okay, just want to talk to you about a couple of other bits, yeah. if that's okay. So, going back to last weekend, did you watch the big Dubois Joyce fight? Yeah, I did watch that fight, yeah. And, and what did you think of that? Um, it was a great fight. I think um, Joyce beat, uh, beat uh, Daniel Gabbai's by experience, but if. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, Joyce, he had the Olympic gold medal. Uh, yeah, he went to Olympics. Uh, did he get a bronze, I think? Uh, uh, the, Joyce got a silver. Silver uh, yeah. at the Olympics. And that's why uh, I think he just uh, was a bit too experienced for Daniel Dubois. But Daniel Dubois was uh, very strong, uh, very tough, and uh, fair play to him. And if they had a rematch, do you see that going the same way? or? Um, I think the Dubois would probably learn from that fight and adjust and probably beat Joyce in that again. Excellent. Well, let's hope his eye mends, um, as I'm sure everyone does, and we might get to see that again. Uh, he, he come um, a little bit of unfair criticism, in my opinion, that's come on social media. What were your thoughts on that? Um, I just like because that eye was a bit too swelling because even though if you get a punch from there it can even get more damage so I think he did the right thing and took a knee and they had to stop the fight because that eye could have got even more worse and it could have got even more crit uh, critical for him for his uh, further um, boxing career. That's nice to hear that you're basically saying that that's understandable because there's a few people out there saying he's a quitter, which is a bit harsh, I think. Yeah. Okay, and just one last bit, Adam. Um, this weekend's card, so we've got um, a couple of big fights. Firstly, this side of the water, you've got um, Anthony Yard out against Lyndon Arthur. Yeah. What are your thoughts and predictions on that that's one? That's uh, a great fight for boxing. Both of them under, uh, not both of them, uh, Arthur undefeated. He's got that long range. Uh, he's got a good job as well. Anthony Yard, experienced pro. Uh, being up with the world class fighters, but that, that's a really good fight to watch. So. Yeah. And what about on the other side of the water then, in a bit of a big fight, you've got uh, Errol Spence Jr. Okay. against Danny Garcia. Yeah, that's that's a very good fight, but I still think Errol Spence beats Danny Garcia, because Danny Garcia, is, I think he's a bit coming to his end now, because I think, uh, I think uh, Errol Spence is going to beat him. No concerns about the car crash he had and that he might be not the same um, fighter? When you look at it, it, it was a bad car crash, but I still think uh, Errol Spence will, uh, will dominate again. Excellent. Well, I look forward to both of them. Will you watch that one in the night? Uh, yeah, I'll be watch, watching that, staying up for that fight. Good stuff. Well, look, thanks for taking time out as always to speak to us, Adam. Hopefully, with the crowds coming back, when you are back out next time, I'll come and actually watch the fight and see you there. Yeah. If not, we'll pick up with you after as always. That's right. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you. mate. Thanks for having us.
enjoy the video feel free to hit the like subscribe and share as always if you want to support us to the next level head over to the patreon Dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace